Hello everyone, welcome, welcome to my YouTube channel. I thought I'd pop by and create a sample with one of my new releases. My releases are available from my web page. Let me just show you that. I'll just get my web page just on my iPad so that you can see that. Um, where are we? I've got that many windows open it's just unbelievable so my website you can see is tracyevansboutiquedesigns.com and if you go to there you can either shop all or you can come to the products here and click on there there's top tips i'll also have a gallery going forward as well <coughs> So if you'd like to purchase any of the products, you can find them there on my website. And everything will be branded the way I've got the stamps as well. So this stamp, TE6, is called Branched Heart. And I'm going to use that stamp set. Just love this one. I love them all, but... Right. Let's just move that out of the way. And I've got a piece of Pink Frog Smooth Card 300 GSM. And it is four inches by six inches. I've then got a black mat, four and a quarter by six and a quarter, also by Pink Frog. And then I've got a card blank, five by seven. And I cut all mine from Pink Frog card because I just like a nice sturdy card that stands up on the mantelpiece. <coughs> So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bray it. You see, I've decided I want to use a stencil and then I don't get them. Let's grab them. There's always something a little bit extra that I need or I think I need. So I'm going to start off with Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide Ink. And I'm going to use my brayer. Now I've got one brayer for inks and one brayer for paints. That's a luxury. You don't need that. You can just clean or wipe in between. So I'm just going to pick up the ink on my speedball brayer. Now I love the speedball ball brayer. It's just got a little bit of squishiness to it, but it's firm other than that. But it works beautifully. And I'm go I've used the same brayer for years and years. So I just stick with what I know. And then I'm just going to just flick. It's like doing a little wheelie. So I'm just going to flick the ink. So just keep flicking the ink. And it's surprising. If I wipe this, there's still ink on there. So what I'd like you to do is just keep applying the ink. Because if you keep going over the card, it adds a little bit of texture as well. So we're going to apply that ink again like so and then we'll just bray it and can you see it's now got a little bit darker so I'm sort of doing a little bit of a, a wheelie now let me just grab a little bit of a wipe now I can go over here loads of times and just keep applying a little bit more ink and texture now it doesn't look like there's anything on there but watch my wipe now I don't show you initially. Look how much colour's on there. So it's, it, it's surprising how much is still left on that brayer. <coughs> I'm then going to take a piece of cotton dry foam or a brush is absolutely fine. I don't know whether I've got a brush. Let's have a look. I need longer arms so you can either use your brush or you can use your cut and dry foam now let me grab a stencil I'll use one of my all and create stencils as this oh I've picked the wrong tile you can't make it up can you Right, so I've got my all and create stencil and I'm going to use twisting and turning 157. I've got that many envelopes. 
So twisting and turning 157 and it's entirely up to you how you use your stencil. So if I use a brush, I'm going to get a light layer. If I use cut and dry foam, it's denser. It picks up more layers of ink that stay on there and you get a deeper, thicker uh, application of ink. We'll just go with our brush and we'll just apply the ink. Now, I don't like to hold my brushes down here because I find this bend here doesn't give me much control. So I like to hold it down here and then I can just, I'm in control a little bit more. Is there anything coming on there? Oh yeah, I was thinking my brush felt a bit funny then. So would you, I know what it is. It's because I had Versa Mark ink on my stencil and I can feel a little bit of the stickiness on there. So just applying the ink. So just go over, just apply, and it doesn't look like you're doing anything. You can hold this in place or you can use low tack tape. And I can just see it's definitely applying, but I want to show you the difference. So if I hold this in place. I've then got some of that subtle stenciling on there. If I use cut and dry foam, you get more of an application of ink. So there's different reasons that you use different things. And I can definitely feel a little bit of stickiness on there. But yeah, so it depends what you apply your inks with. You know, that always makes a difference as well. So I'm just wiping away some of that stickiness just from my, my stencil. And you can see I've got the stenciling in the background. And what I'm going to do before I spritz that with water, I'm going to stamp the image. I'm going to stamp the image. And what I'm going to do is in some of my workshop samples, I've stamped the whole heart and the branch. But what I'm going to do is if I place this on here, I can see exactly what I'm going to get now. I'm going to leave this area and just have it open. So what I'm going to do is let's just grab that black Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. So let's just grab that. I'm just going to use my black ink. And what I'm going to do is turn it over so that I'm working with the branches. And what I'm going to do is not ink this area here. just so that I've got part, I've got their branches and just part of that heart. And you know, if it doesn't work out okay, I can do it all over again. So let's daunt it down a bit. Let's bring it across to the right a little bit. So you see me ink this area here and a little sort of touch of this area here as well. So just give that time just to absorb onto the card. Now I've added that layer of oxide. So that means that the card now becomes less absorbent because it's got that layer in between the stamp and the card. So the ink will sit on the top a little bit. So don't be in too much of a rush just to, to stamp everything, right? So what I've got now, if you look at the image, I've now used it as if I haven't got the heart. Yes. So you're changing it a bit. So I can have the heart if I want, because if I look at a sample I've done for the workshop, let me grab it. So if you look at this sample I've done for one of my workshops, which is workshop 104, you can see I've got the whole heart and I've changed the other half. So let me bring that back. And then if you look at this sample, you can see that I've used it differently again. It's just nice to use things 
in different ways. So now you've got something that looks completely different than having the whole heart. So if you didn't want a heart, you can, you can change it. But what that means now is I can add other elements to that. So, for instance, let's, let's have a little play around. I love playing around. So let's place the heart back. That's always a good start, isn't it? We are, you know, we can add some colour or whatever. Um, let's grab... What I like to do is, when I'm sort of stamping, I love to use the acetate. I always have done. Just to see if I want to add... You see, now I can add the chef... Let me lift this up. I can add the chevron here. So now I'm creating my own collage. But I only want the first chevron. So let's take some low tech tape. So I'm going to place this low tech tape just across there. Let's cut this down and then place this piece here, like so. So now what I've got is I've just got that chevron visible. So I can now ink this up without worry about touching the second chevron. And this is what I, I adore about stamps. So I can just remove this now. And then I can stamp my chevron. Now I can either have it going up, I can have it. Shall we have it going? This is this is the hardest bit. Is I'm just going to place that chevron there. But what I'm like I'm trying to show you is that your stamps are so adaptable, so so versatile. Especially if when you're designing your product. You think about how you're going to use that product and visualise. There we go. So now I look like I've created my own stamp because this stamp now, it, it looks totally different than what I've got here. So you're changing it up completely. And I just love that. I absolutely love it. Now, do I want any more chevrons? Oh, you see, I love, I love, love playing around with stamps. It just makes me so happy. And this is what creating should be about. So I'm going to place, I could have used the other piece, but I tend to use a clean piece, mainly because then I don't get that black ink all over the place, but that's me. clean that you see I'm getting excited because you're creating something then that's different than what the stamp looks like there we go so I'm going to ink the chevron up again and I don't have to worry about that because then I just remove it wonderful so now I can add a chevron here let's attach it to there like so so if you're one of those crafters that just like stamping and a little bit of color my stamps allow you to do that as well you can create your own your own backgrounds <laughs> just love it so i'm just creating my own collage now which I just absolutely adore and I've got no heart on there so that doesn't have to be the way the stamps are on the packaging you can use them lots of different ways and these chevrons I am absolutely hooked on so let's add the chevrons now what I can do is I've got my little birds here. So if, if I'm umming and ahhing, which I am, you know, and which bird can I use? First of all, take your birds off the packaging. 
and then just see if you can. So I could stamp. I could mask off the. Or I could just add him. And I think he is going to work better. So talk to yourself like I do, which is quite frequently for me. Use your acetate to give you some ideas of how to play around with your whole piece. And all I'm doing is I'm having, a, I'm having, not having, having a play. So I could even cut him, him out if I wished. And I'm going to faff around for Evie. So just give him a really good inking. Shall we have him? What do you think there? I'm afraid I am going to faff a little bit. I just can't make my mind up. I think I'm going to have him there. There we go. And at the moment, all I've got is a card with no dimension. So you don't have to have dimension if you don't wish to have dimension. It's entirely up to you. Just add our little bird. So just take your time. That bird's got some silhouette. Well, it is a silhouette. It's not got some silhouette. It's a silhouette stamp. So you just need to allow that just to soak into there. So I've now got my bird on there. And none of this, it, now you look like you've created your own stamp. Just wonderful. So what I'm going to do is grab a piece of copy of paper. And I'm just going to give that a little bit of a, a blot. Mainly because of that oxide ink that's sitting on there. There's hardly any ink on there, but it's better to be safe. And I will add some touches of white, but I just don't want to do that yet. So, don't want to add any other elements. Just bear with me. Let me... Um, so. so, I like to look at my stamps and just play around a little bit. So, we've got... Which stamp are we looking at now? Can you tell I've got too many stamps out now? There in front of me. So on this stamp, the heart, branched heart, I've also got these here. So I'm going to use them. So let's take that beard and put that back. And I can add these hearts. And I can use my acetate if I wish, but I'm just going to decide. So I can add a little bit of the hearts there. So I can hang the hearts from the branch. Like so. So you've got the hearts now that are hanging from the branch and you're creating your own composition. So we'll just give that a little bit of a blot again. And what I'm doing is I'm just looking at all my stamp sets that I've, I've re I'm releasing or I've released. And I just want to sort of have a look at what I've got, just to play around a little bit. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to look at your stamps and, and sort of play around with them. I want you to sort of, right, there we go. Look at them in a different way. Look how versatile they are. So on my stamp set, it's also a smaller one of these hearts. So what I'm going to do is just 
just extend a stamp just extending just so you can see and we're going to add text and different things so just bear with me so what I'm going to do now is let's take that heart as well so I'm creating my collage I've got the heart up here and I'm going to create Actually, I'm not going to add one there at the moment, just until I just play with a couple more things. So I'm then going to add, I've got the word calm here. So we're going to add the word calm. And because I'm picking stamps up, you're going to end up with black ink over your fingers. So just be aware of that. So I'm just creating... my own collage now I'm creating my own collage and none of it has got any dimension it is completely flat so we we'll use the calm and then we'll use the breath breathe breath right there we go use our other sentiment sometimes I get so engrossed in the composition that sometimes I forget to even add ink to the stamp. So what I'm doing is I'm playing. I'm literally playing with the stamp. And what I'm trying to show you is, if you're not a lover of dimension and you see Tracy add loads of dimension, you don't have to do that. I'm determined that I will continue with my education and show you lots of different ways that you can use those stamps and it's also learning when to stop so i can add let's just give a little bit of a, a wipe to them which is a, a first for tracy so let's just give that a little bit of a blot what i'm going to do now is add a little bit of color but can you see I've now created my own collage. Just love it. Absolutely love it. So what I'm going to do now is grab a brush, some water, because everybody will know me by now and my brush is never clean because I'm very naughty. And you should have those brushes cleaned every time. So I'm just going to grab a piece of kitchen roll now you can add a little bit of colour with whatever medium floats your boat, whatever makes you happy. So I'm going to use fuchsia and ruby acrylic paints. I'm going to start with the fuchsia. And let's just turn it this way and only put a tiny bit of paint out because you don't want to sort of waste your paint. Just taking off a little bit of the moisture. Now that's far too wet. So let's just, I always feel better if I don't add too much moisture. Now we can just blend this out. Just to give it a little bit of darkness. So I'm going to then take the ruby. Again, not too much paint. The fuchsia is just to give me some of the darkness. So can you see, I'm going to add a little bit of water, take off that excess because then I don't cover up all the text because if the paint is opaque by watering that down a little bit it won't it won't obliterate 
the writing. So I'm going to go in with a little bit more of the red now and just make it a little bit brighter. I can come back in with some of that fuchsia just to give me a little bit more brightness. And what you'll see is underneath is your oxide and that oxide starts to obviously oxidize the oxide ink. So I'm going to sort of continue just to, just to build up just a tiny bit of water, take off the excess because I don't want to add too much of that. too quickly just sort of blend it out to nothing so you're adding a little bit of a pet of your paint each time a little bit more and then I'll take a bit of water to create a wash take off the excess that I've got there with the kitchen roll and just blend that out just take your time and what you're doing is you're blending out the colour. It just takes a little bit of patience and me being in camera would, would help. So just building up the depth. Take off the excess, use your kitchen roll to take off the water just to blend that out to nothing. Pick up the red again, a little bit more richness, just a little bit more richness just around here. Make a wash and take off the extra, extra moisture and then just blend your colour out. So you're just taking your time just to build up the depth of colour. You just want to build that depth of colour up just to give that a pop of colour. I can still see touches of my stenciling down here. It all adds to the layers. So I'm going to go in with the fuchsia just to give me a darker depth of colour, just to give it some depth. So I'm just touching the fuchsia very lightly just to give me some added depth just to the edge. Then I'll rinse it off, go back to the red, take off the excess and just blend that out. Just blend the red out. Let's have a little bit more water just to make a wash. Just take off the excess. Don't work with too much water. So if I use a wash of that colour, it sort of blends the same colour out, but just with a wash. And you can see it just builds a nice deep rich layer so it just works lovely so i'll go back with that fuchsia and just add a little bit more to that darker edge just because it just gives me a little bit of depth 
just to just to my design just gives it the depth that I want just rinse that out and then we'll just pick up whatever red is on here just to blend that out a little bit there we go let's grab some clean water just so that we've got a wash of that red and then take off the excess just to blend out any harsh lines. So we'll just give everywhere a nice clean now. You could pick that up and bray that onto another piece of card, should you wish. So we've used our Dina Wakely paints to paint with, which is ruby and fuchsia. Just to give a little bit. So I'm going to let that dry. You can see that's wet. And then let's just go back to the hearts. Where's my little A7? Come on, Tracy. Can't pick it up. So what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to take my washi again. I have to keep reaching over because if I don't put everything back, I just end up with stuff everywhere. I mean, I've always got stuff everywhere anyway. So I'm just going to mask off a little bit. Well, the other, the other heart, not the other half, the other heart, just so that I can just ink up the little heart because I'm adding to my composition. So now I'm just going to ink up the little heart. There we go. And I don't have to worry about the ink getting on the other side because that washi tape, not washi tape, low tack tape has protected it. So then I can just add that little heart just below the beard just so that the beard has got that and now I've created something that is unique that is mine and then you can play with your compositions and if you want yours to look a little bit different you can you can change where you where you place things so I'm just going to make sure that this works So I'm going to add a little white dot there. So I'm just adding some sort of touches of white just here and there, just so you can see the touches of white. Just sort of on. I'm just going to add a little bit of white, just sort of going down here. Doesn't have to be too overpowering at all. I'm then going to add some splatters of white. I love my white splatters. lovely so just adding those touches of white splatters now you could keep it flat if you like look there's no dimension on there but i'm going to add a little bit of something because that's me all over on this heart branched heart i've got this like tulipy kind of flower so we're going to take that and i'm going to find a red ink which you can bet, if I want a red ink, I won't be able to find one. That'll do. So I've got Distress Oxide Lumberjack Plaid. Let's grab a little scrap of card, which I've got on the floor. There we 
again. And I've got my little scrap of card. And let's just ink my little tulip-esque flower. Let's add that. Now, I could keep it like that, no problem at all, if I wanted to. But what I'm going to do is add a little bit. Can you see, can you actually see that? The tiniest amount of paint on there. Little tiny amount of water, but always have your kitchen roll at hand. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of that fuchsia and I'm going to do you know, I don't know whether this is going to be fine enough. Let me just find one of the fine brushes. Is that fine? Yes, you two can spend hours trying to pick a bit of water up. Let's load that brush with a bit of the fuchsia. Take off the excess. Let's just add a little bit. that fuchsia just to give it a little bit of darkness let's rinse that off and let's add a little bit of the red you definitely don't need much paint for this you need the tiniest amount of paint let's pick up that red and I'm just going to sort of blend the fuchsia out just blend that out and we'll leave a little bit of white there i'll go back to the fuchsia even though it's got the red on let's just rinse that let's grab some clean water take off the excess and we'll go back to that red just make sure I've not got I just lose myself I'm terrible just lose myself so let's get rid of that and then I just need a little bit more fuchsia so the tiniest amount of paints I'm using just make sure I just keep making sure that I don't end up with too much moisture. Just on my design. So I'm just sort of building up a little bit. So let's just give that a clean. Let's clean those up so that we haven't got that paint lying around. And it's good if you can if you can give things time to rest. And obviously it's much, much better if you cut out when the piece that you're cutting out is dry. Because what you end up doing is you end up cutting a piece out that's very bendy because it's got so much moisture in there. So just be aware of that. Just cut out this little floral. Now you don't have to add a little sort of floral if you don't wish. Now, when something's dried, it's then better to go in with a little bit more darkness. Now, if you can't sort of do it with your paint, you can. What colours have I got here? Like I've got my Prisma here and this is Tuscan Red, PC937. You can also go in with your... Prisma 
can just add a little bit more darkness with your prisma. If you can't get enough depth, you can you can just go in with a little bit of pencil if you wish. So it's entirely up to you which way that you go in with that. So then I can add my sort of, let me just, so you have to sort of decide, there it's going to go. You've got to decide where it's going to go. And you also want it to sort of show a little bit as well. But you don't want it to be too much. Like if I add it here, for instance, can you see how it just blends in to the red? But just giving that little touch here, it just works quite nicely. I don't stick anything down until I'm really sure how I want to add that. You see, I also like it there because it's sort of it's got a little bit of a balance. So I like this balance here. So let's just add that there. So play around with your compositions and how you like to see things because you will see things differently than I will see things. But that's what's good about being creative. Just add that there. Just so that you can see. And then I'm just going to... Now, I've used Distress Oxide on this stamp. So if I wanted to go back and use black with that, I need to make sure that Oxide is wiped off. So I'm then going to take... What else have I got? I'm going to take that heart wording again I'm just going to stamp that with my black but you don't have to add any dimension if you don't wish so just had the heart let's just cut that out And I do love doing the things like this where you create your own compositions and have a little bit of fun with your stamps. So then I'm going to add the heart just here. So there's not much dimension on this. In fact, it's still pretty flat. So if you were posting it out to somebody, it would grow quite cheaply. There we go. And then let's just add a little bit of shading to our design. And what you should always do, Tracy, is put things back, come here. There we go. And now we do know, again, because I dipped the brush in. Let's just clean that brush. Kitchen roll keeps disappearing because I keep moving it into different places. I would recommend that you clean your brushes each time. So then I'm going to take a little bit of the Ink Tense pencil. So this is Ink Tense pencil and it's a grey one, which means that will react with the moisture that is in my brush, just so I can add a little bit of shading. And then I'm just going to accentuate the shading just underneath. the 
spit it out, Tracy, underneath the chevrons. Just going to accentuate that a little bit more. Just underneath the chevrons. Just to give that a little bit more shading. And then I'm just going to add a few more splatters. That's it. And then I can add that to my card. So I need this to be dry because I can then just add touches of the white just to my little pieces there. Now, if we add this to a black mat, again, it's pretty flat. Look, there's hardly any dimension on there. So it would go through your postage. So let's add this to our black card. So the card was four by six. The mat is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And does it look classy when it goes against that black? I'm then going to add that to a card, white card blank again with Pink Frog Smooth Card. Just make sure it opens the right way because I know what I'm like. There we go. Lovely, simple card to create, but I absolutely love it. I absolutely love that. Just lovely. So I hope you enjoy creating something similar. Love to all. And I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.